Everyone, I assure you, it will be shorter than the last time. So, our team project is to build a school in a refugee camp in Kenya. So, around the world, so according to the UN, we have like 16.1 million of refugees, and among them, we have like 8 million of them are childs, like 50%. And they spend an average time of 20 years in those camps. So, we choose a camp uh, in Kenya. Uh, near the frontier, 50 kilometers from Somalia, which is called Dadaab, which is the biggest camp, uh, refugee camp in the world. It was uh, constructed in 1992 because of severe droughts and civil war was started in Somalia. So here you can see a global view of what the camps look like. So we can see like the tents of the UN, you can see this angle here, like local tents from Somali people. So over there in this region, the, the temperature is like in an average at 30 degrees, and you have two main uh, rain seasons, so between March and May and um, October and December. So we decided to build a school uh, during June and, and September. So the population data, so this is data from the UN, from September uh, 90, uh, 2016. So you have like 2,060,000 uh, um, people over there, and among them you have 60% who are under under 18. So that means you have like 160, 156,000 uh, children in this camp for 98% of the population to come from Somalia. And the recent fact is like the government right now is pushing the people all to go away uh, in Somalia. So the education over there is like you have like main organizations, like national ones, like this one came from Kenya, from Norway, Danish, and internationals to take care of the uh, 30 schools you can find there, and in an average, all these schools have uh, 1,500 people, children, for one teacher for 85 students. So if you take these numbers uh, for the number of children you have in that, you have only 30% of the children to attend schools. So if you want to have the same criteria, everyone go to school, you have to build 100 schools. So this is huge need. So this is a global view of uh, the camp. So you have the different parts of them. So you have like Dagahale, Eiffel One, and Hagadeo who will build first. And there are like more or like 70,000 people over there. And like the two new ones, like Eiffel One and Combios, this one in 2011. And this is like the real village of the DAP uh, with the uh, UN thing. So we decided to build a school in Combios. So this is the model of our school. So what we wanted to do is to combine the school that we have here. So we have like classrooms, we have four classrooms. We want to for the teachers, the computer room, cafeteria, and the library. But we wanted to combine it also with uh, a sport field that can be used by all the community around in the camp. So all the schools we created are very easy to duplicate. It means you have like an elevated foundations, uh, walls of bricks, a ring of beam, trust beams, and uh, some metal sheets over it. So it's very easy to duplicate and if people want to to um, increase the score, to build the one, it's very easy to do. So this is a view uh, of uh, the school from the outside, from, from the village, and you can see that we decided to put some colors in it, and it's an open space, it means you have no fence, anything. We really want to say it's not only a school, but a place where people can gather. The materials, so we choose all the materials in the region of, of Kenya, so there are three main ones. So the first one is the stones. So they may be the most expensive one in our project, but we wanted really to have a great foundation for our school because we couldn't afford that uh, uh, our project is damaged because we didn't do a good foundation. So we have bricks and uh, iron panels. So the main uh, revolution uh, uh, in the use of materials is we use a technique which is already used a little bit in Kenya, which is used like machines, like this. You have two different ones, and you can make like straight bricks or curved one. It's very, very easy to do, it means you have soil and a uh, little bit of cement and you can do the brick. And it's very cool because with this brick is very cheap to do, it's very easy to put, and also you don't have to put cement mortar between the bricks, like, it's like Lego. Like they all the brick all themselves together. Afterwards we decide to study a little bit the structure, uh, stability of the trust wood uh, on each classroom. So thanks to um, a software and the modelization of it. So here we have 
in these two points to the walls of our, of our school and here we have like one of the pillow just in front of it so making like the modelization with like the metal sheets, the wind and like a force of airflow from, it, from below we found that in the weak parts of it, so for example in this one we have like a force of 2000 newtons more or less which is like very affordable compared to the uh, physical um, uh, characteristic of our wood we use if you compare it to uh, characteristics. So we decided to implement in our, in our school uh, water tanks to, um, to collect the rainwater. So these tanks, we have four of them of two different dimensions and they just, the system is very easy to understand that the first part of the rain that go inside it is like taken away so we have only the good water inside and yeah, it's perfect. And we also decided to put some solar panels in it so first, we, we just uh, target what are our needs uh, for the school, so charging, computers, and lightning. So we had like an amount of energy we wanted to collect. And thanks to our software, we could, uh, from the area, know the, the power we need for having this energy. And we could, after, the, uh, put, uh, decide how much uh, solar panels we need from Solatec Kenya. And finally, the estimated cost of it, we it's made all of them thanks to the dimensions of our, of our structures, of our old of our foundations. The engineers, the one people who are going to go there to teach uh, the guys to uh, how if you want to do it again at the school. So we, do, we, we think we need three of them to go there. Solar panels, stoves and material transport is also for the living of them. And we end up with a total cost of 10,000 euros. So this is a final view of what would, would look like the so, so the library and the, the cafeteria with the field just behind it and you can see that we made it in fact like the roof is like a little bit inclined like this at 4 p.m. you can have like a shadow on it and you can protect from the sun and to conclude we can say that this kind of work is really important because we have to go further than just um, and, uh, so to make them survive in this camp but we have to think about the future and how we can integrate them in life. That's it.